This is the hangar scene from Antigraviator, an upcoming game from Cybernetic Warus. And through Unity 2017.1 and .2, we've seen a bunch of improvements to our 3D asset workflow. I'll use this scene to uh, demonstrate these shortly. But generally speaking, our imports are more accurate, saving you time to iterate faster and better preserve the creative decisions made in your 3D application. These features include new normal calculations, importing of lights and cameras, animation of visibility, in addition to new workflows for keyframing inside Unity. Additionally, we have implemented a deterministic importer with new materials tab to embed materials in your FBX, keeping your project neat. We can now import Stingray physically based shaded materials from Max and Maya to allow for a closer match of materials straight into Unity. Best practice for importing these assets come under the following areas scale and units, file and object naming, mesh topology, textures, materials and file formats. So with scale and units it's important to be aware of your content creation tools, system and project units. These can be set under a number of different user interface menus, um, preferences etc. Be aware for example that max comes often set to inches uh, and you might want to work with centimeters or meters depending on whether you're working with characters. Generally speaking, it's just important to be aware of what you're expecting to export uh, before you work in Unity. So maybe use metric where possible. And the reason that real world scales are important to work to is that they help with global illumination and physics. Um, if you imagine the scale of bounced light uh, among a confined space, then those scales are important to identify where those rays are going to bounce around. Physics as well likes to work with real world scales so that um, objects have the right mass uh, and other properties. And it's important to be aware that FBX export dialog also has a scale and unit parameter uh, section which can throw things off or make sure that you're in line with what you expect your export to be. And then finally we have a, a scale compensation import which you can use to adjust for example if you've received your asset from elsewhere and it's it wasn't set up with the right scales at source then you can compensate there and, and that saves us having a um, transform scaling in unity which is uh, has a cost associated with it so the final thing to be fully aware of when you're importing animation data is that your frame rates can be set uh, across different dccs so make sure they're consistent with what your expectations are file and object naming goes without saying that naming objects sensibly and uniquely can really help with your project in terms of making it uh, accessible to others, but also trying to find your assets and preventing problems further down the line when it comes to version control. In general, try and use the version control system to do that job for you. So use simple but descriptive naming, avoid special characters, final test, all that kind of stuff. And if your source control software adds uh, numbers in the background or iteration versions then that can be more efficient than trying to manually name your files to avoid risking clashing versions of the same file and keep your hierarchy simple and modular where possible especially in your scene hierarchy so that you can see and understand where your objects uh, are in, in, the in the in the scenes and use working folders for really large files like PSDs outside your assets folder if you have a, a photoshop file with many layer groups you know upward of 500 to a gigabytes inside then reloading that each time is not very efficient so you can spit out pngs uh, a more target file size inside your project so yeah use interchange formats to keep down your project bloat and modular portable file formats for 3d files like the fbx for your meshes and um, so that you're not having enormous Maya and Max files with all the reference and extraneous data that you don't need in your project. Better to work in a modular fashion where you can because then you can have different attributes for each of those FBX exports rather than one big file with lots and lots of components. Um, and only embed media if textures are not already in the project. Portability is quite good for that, uh, embedding the media if you're um, passing an asset off to another organization but generally speaking you kind of want one pool of assets for your textures mesh topology um, it can be 
good idea to build with an efficient topology. In other words, using polys only where you need them so that you don't needlessly put in a huge amount of polygons that are harder to cut down and remove later on in the project. So set your poly budgets and consider optimizing geometry, especially if you're sourcing from 3D capture or sculpting tools like Mudbox or um, ZBrush, Poser, etc. Where you can afford it, try and evenly space polygons, especially architecture. This helps with the global illumination and lighting. Conversely, avoid over-optimization and super long thin triangles because that kind of geometry can struggle with, especially with GI and light map baking. Then try and see the bigger picture in terms of considering the frequency of that asset that's used in your project across your uh, teams, especially for sort of assessing the budget for that individual item. If you know how many times it's used, you know a bit more closely how many polygons you can spare for it. Uh, and add detail with normal ma mapping and texturing rather than needless amounts of polygons, because then you can um, you can also lodge your and nip map your textures at distance to remove that extra detail when you don't need it. But again, work with high res meshes to start with, because you can always in that non-destructive workflow, generate your lower poly and your LODs in between to allow for variations of the same mesh that can be loaded in for level of detail inside Unity. Textures, as explained, PSDs are great for prototyping and for your high-res source, but they can bloat the project. So once you start moving out of prototyping, it's quite good to start spitting out um, PNG or from layer groups into your project so that you have specific textures for specific purposes. Output flat context size images into the project. That, that's the idea behind PNGs. Um, they're quite efficient. they not non-lossy, but smaller format. It only tends to store the colors that are used in the uh, texture. Uh, and textures can be scaled down inside Unity, so don't scale them right down at source because you can apply that later on and then scale them back up again in the project if you need to. So use te texture atlasing where possible uh, but use different textures for different shader types. Tiling textures and layered materials tend to save texture side but not detail so multiple texture layers can add that kind of granularity, a detail pass for example uh, depending on the shader you're using. Uh, very common in terrains. So materials, verify, organize and name materials to group into a sensible place uh, into your scene after import. You can use Unity as the master materials for how you edit and set up with your standard shader for example, but you can also understand that you can use the Stingray physically based shading material in Max or Maya if you want to have a physically based shaded round trip uh, workflow. That's to say you can set up your diffuse normals, all that kind of stuff inside the source package and have that preserved inside Unity if you use the Stingray material. And that creates a new standard shader of the roughness model. So set up your materials with the standard shader, generally speaking, um, so that you can populate it with slots to add the detail. And then to import albedo, roughness, metallic, normal, AO, emissive maps, and all those other things, make sure you try out the Stingray PBS material. File formats, choose proprietary formats for fast prototyping. If you're wanting to very quickly update your Unity project with your models, then Max and Maya files can be great for that, but switch over to interchange formats when you want to make them more portable and you're collaborating. Choose FBX in general for more supported functionality and mapping of materials. And then of course, choose life. So when we say inefficient topology, what do we mean? We're going to have a quick look at a um, model inside this project. And it generally means that once you've imported uh, your model, you're still in a position to uh, iterate on it. So if we were to slip into our um, folder here, we can have a little look. So a good example of mesh topology uh, is this ship. We can switch to shaded wireframe to see how the polygons are laid out. Um, and it's a fairly good example of just using polygons where they're needed. Um, you can see there's more detail around the window uh, and less detail in the flat sections. But of course, making use of normal maps as and where required to give extra uh, surface detail. 